This video was requested by a viewer, and this is one argument from creationists that I hadn't heard. It involves frogs that eat their own babies and our old foe, irreducible complexity. So let's jump right in. Gastric brooding frogs are a genus of East Australian ground-dwelling frog called Rio Batracus, which contains two species, Silus and Vitellinus. Interestingly, these guys went extinct in the early 1980s due to habitat fragmentation and pathogenic fungi. However, some researchers are attempting to resurrect the species. So why are these guys the target of creationists? Well, the mother lays her eggs in water and then proceeds to swallow them, allowing them to develop until the tadpoles hatched. The froglets are then put into the water and they go on their merry way. Creationists, especially Jehovah's Witnesses, have seized on this strange phenomenon as a way to spread their ill-informed, irreducible complexity arguments. Now, how does this work? How are the eggs not digested? Well, the eggs secrete a lipid called prostaglandin E2, or PGE2, that, when swallowed, halts the mother's production of gastric hydrochloric acid, allowing the eggs to rest safely in her stomach. Prostaglandins have a wide array of hormone-like effects, from dilating blood vessels, to inducing labor, to regulating inflammation, to controlling cell growth, and much more. They're also found in almost every tissue in humans and other animals. Even more interestingly, some prostaglandins already inhibit gastric acid secretion in other animals, so the function of PGE2 in frogs is already accounted for. But, how did that function come to be expressed on the eggs? Nothing more than simple co-option. Understand that co-option occurs all the time in evolution. For example, take a look at snake venom in the 2013 paper, Complex Cocktails, the Evolutionary Novelty of Venoms. Quote, Many venom toxins are thought to evolve via the birth and death process of gene evolution, by which a gene encoding a normal physiological body protein, usually one involved in key regulatory processes or bioactivity, is duplicated and a duplicate copy selectively expressed in the venom gland. These ancestral physiological proteins appear to be expressed in a variety of different tissue types and exhibit diverse ancestral activities. Once a particular gene has been recruited into the venom gland, additional gene duplication often occurs, coupled with protein neo and or subfunctionalization, typically resulting in large multilocus gene families that encode toxins exhibiting a variety of functional activities and potencies. Close quote. In other words, genes coding for different tissues were duplicated, mutated, and co-opted for function in venom glands. Essentially the same thing happened to the gene for antifreeze glycoproteins in Antarctic nodothenioid fish. So could the strange reproductive habits of Rio Batracus have evolved, or did they require special creation? Well, as near as I can tell, no one has yet to offer an explanation as to how the frogs acquired their habits, since the frogs haven't existed in wild populations for around 30 years. However, I'll attempt to offer a solution. Some animals already house babies in their mouths for periods of time, such as some cichlids, catfish, gouramis, and arowanas. If in the population of ancestral Rio Batracus, mouth brooding increased the likelihood of offspring survival, then that behavior could have eventually become incorporated into the genes via the Baldwin effect. And PGE2 already exists in frogs, as it aids in uterine contraction. Perhaps in the ancestral frogs, the lipid inhibited the production of gastric acid as well as the production of saliva, halting close-range internal secretions in general. If the mother moved the eggs to her stomach, then she could hold more eggs than the mother that could only hold eggs in her mouth, which may have again occurred through the Baldwin effect. Then, either the mother would have developed a physiological mechanism for not digesting some of the offspring, increasing the numbers of survived offspring, or the offspring developed a mechanism for resisting digestion. As evolution happened, the latter occurred. And, if the production of PGE2 could gradually be amplified in the eggs, then it would provide a selective benefit to the offspring since fewer of them would be digested by the mother. As more PGE2 was produced, the likelihood that some eggs would be digested decreased, resulting in the current state of affairs. So, there exists a possible pathway for the gradual evolution of the odd reproductive habits of gastric brooding frogs. 
Now, none of this will get worked out, of course, by creationists, simply noting how weird or intricate the process is. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.